we need to talk about AI, the state of it in 2025, and how it's going to affect all of us moving forward. Hello, Internet, and welcome to the couch. <laughs> I know you might be wondering, Lee, what the heck is going on here? And, and I get it. This is a bit different than what you'd normally expect from a film theory, but today needed something different. It's always been the theorist philosophy that our videos are supposed to be fun and entertaining, getting you to learn something new about a topic through the lens of your favorite video games, or movies, or food, or lifestyle, etc. We want you to think about the world in a new way, view topics you're familiar with through a different lens. But at the end of the day, it's all for fun. While we do take our research seriously, the theories are just that theories. But every now and then, a subject does come along that requires a more serious conversation, something that warrants a real human face-to-face -face interaction. Well, at least as human as we can be when I'm sitting here in the studio talking to you through a camera. And today is one of those days, because media as we know it, it's changing. It's changing fast, and it's going to look a lot different in the near future. Why? Well, it's because of two words, artificial intelligence. Yeah, today we're talking about AI, our stance on it here at Theorists, how and if we use it in our videos, and how we as a community move forward in a world where AI is becoming an increasingly large part of not only the industries that we cover here, but also everyday life. And the goal here, what I want us all to leave this conversation with, I want to make sure that you are equipped with the knowledge of where and how AI is being used in what you watch and play, and how we can move forward with it as a community. So the best place to start is probably by answering the question, what the heck even is AI? People say the word a lot, and it seems to describe everything nowadays, but what is it really? Well, AI is a mid-Steven Spielberg movie starring Haley Joel Osment. David, stop it! Not my favorite. No, but seriously, AI is artificial intelligence. That's just a fancy way of saying an intelligent computer program. But just how intelligent can vary wildly. You guys remember Clippy, the little character that would help you write Word documents back in the day? Well, he was kind of like an AI. Enemies in a video game? They're also AI. Siri or Alexa or Google Assistant? AI. You get the idea. But while janky behavior in Oblivion can be fun and hilarious and frustrating... Farewell. That's not the type of AI that's really taken over the zeitgeist right now. No, that would be what's known as generative AI. These are computer programs that are able to take a prompt, like a text blurb, and create something for you. And what it creates could be any number of things. It could be an email that you want to send to your teacher, but like 80% more professional. It could be one of those audio files, like the memes on TikTok saying that they don't even think so once. Or it could be a silly image of a cat in a suit handing out donuts. Now, you might look at this sort of generative AI tool and think, Hey, that's cool. Or, ha, a funny meme. What's the big deal? Why is Lee having this serious couch conversation about it? Well, that's because of how these generative AI models actually create the arts or text or audio. See, the AI can't just make these things wholesale. It can't invent them out of thin air. No, just like every other AI model, they have to be trained. A human has to go in and give them information and instructions uh, to tell it when it's gotten something right and where it needs to improve. Uh, to be clear, that's completely normal in these sort of AI models, and that isn't the problem. No, the problem comes down to what information is being given to these AI models. Let's say that I want to take a picture of myself and turn it into a Van Gogh-esque painting using a generative AI model like ChatGPT. That AI isn't going to know who Vincent Van Gogh is unless it's told that information, and it's also not going to know how his art style was unless it's given examples of his work. So you give the AI every single painting Van Gogh ever did, and BAM! Now it understands that style and can create those paintings. Obviously, that's a simplified explanation, but you get the gist. Now, Van Gogh has been dead for over a hundred years. All of his work is in the public domain, so giving his work to an AI model is one thing. But what if you wanted to do the same thing with a living artist? Or, say, a small, independent artist you found on Twitter or Instagram? There's a big problem here. With these generative AI models, there's nothing really stopping someone from coming in when they find an artist with a unique style that they really like, gobbling up all of their work without permission, and then making new artwork in that style with a generative AI without paying that original artist. Artists, writers, and performers are rightfully worried about malicious actors coming in and taking their work without permission and without paying them, and feeding them into AI models. And I get it. That is theft. And that type of AI and the companies using them are profiting off of the back 
backs of people who should be getting compensated for that work, who should be getting paid to do that work instead of the AI doing it for free. Because of this, our stance at Theorist has always been that we support human artists and that we will never use generative AI for assets, scripts, or editing for our videos. We will not create those things ourselves or intentionally use assets that have been AI generated in a video that isn't specifically about that AI generated content. And I want to be 100% crystal clear here. If you are an artist, or a writer, or an actor, or just someone who feels angry that there are people or corporations stealing your work to feed into their AI models and algorithms, your feelings are 100% valid and justified. The theft of your work is unacceptable, and those responsible should be held accountable. And yet, even if they are held accountable, if they're fined or forced to settle with the artists that they stole from to pay up for breaking the law, they might just view that as the cost of doing business and keep on stealing that work and using it for their own benefit, using it in their own products and selling that technology to others to use in theirs. And if you're like me or the rest of us here at Theorist, that creates a problem when we cover industries that are going to use generative AI that benefits from stolen work. I spent a lot of time thinking about this, really weighing everything up, and I talked to everyone in Team Theorist about it. And I mean everyone. I talked to the other hosts. I talked to our producers. I talked to our strategy guy. I talked to Matt. And all of us agreed we had to confront this. We had to figure out how we were going to move forward because the hard truth is that generative AI is here and it's not going away. Pandora's box has been opened. The genie is out of the bottle and it's never going back in. And I do not see a future where we here at Theorist can avoid covering projects that use generative AI. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because it's also becoming nigh impossible to avoid AI assets on today's internet. Yes, our editors and artists don't use generative AI to create any assets that they make for our theories, but we can't make everything we might need for a video. We can't go out and take every stock photo or travel to every location we might need a picture of, or like make a 3D model of a dragon wearing blue jeans riding a skateboard when we need one for a theory. That sounds oddly specific, but you'd be surprised. So we rely on stock image resources to get a lot of our assets. And in recent years, these websites have been flooded with AI generated content. Sometimes it's labeled and sometimes it's easy to tell, so we don't use those. But in other cases, they're not labeled and it's not easy to tell. Is this image a highly polished photograph just touched up in Photoshop or was it generated by AI? Is this art in an artist's specific style with imperfections because they're human or was it generated with AI? Is this 3D model of a dragon wearing blue jeans and riding a skateboard because it was made to fill a very specific niche or was it generated by an AI that didn't know any better. It's hard to figure out sometimes, and it just blows my mind. Our editors and thumbnail artists are some of the best in the business. They are intelligent, clever creatives, and I don't blame them in the slightest for missing when something is AI generated, because I miss it too. No joke, we have a minimum of three people look at our videos before they go up, sometimes more. And one of the things we look for is when an asset just feels off. Sometimes, even if we're not sure an asset is AI generated and it just feels wrong, we'll ask the editor to replace it just to be safe. But as time has gone on, it's become harder and harder to spot the difference. And sometimes an asset will slip through the cracks. This actually happened in the last couple of weeks in one of my film theories covering the Minecraft movie. And while I wish I could say that it's never going to happen again, I just can't. Why? Because these generative AI are only going to get better and better. And eventually, they'll be indistinguishable from real, human-made content. Do you guys remember a few years ago when the Balenciaga Pope meme was going around? Uh, these were basically pictures of Pope Francis walking around wearing a very expensive puffer jacket created by the high-end fashion brand Balenciaga, which was weird because that wasn't really something that was in character for the Pope. Well, that wasn't real. This was a series of AI-generated images, and while I consider myself a pretty savvy person when it comes to this sort of technology, I'm not afraid to admit that these pictures legitimately fooled me as I scrolled past them in my feed. This was actually the first circumstance where I was genuinely taken aback by how good and how realistic these images could be. I just thought that these were fun, silly pictures taken of the Pope wearing an ice jacket. It's weird, and it's funny, and that's why it went viral, but... Whatever. What do you mean they were generated with AI? Now, sure, they fall apart when you really look closely at certain parts, his eyes and his hands and such. But how much longer are these tells actually going to be in these sorts of images? We used to make fun of stuff like AI Will Smith eating spaghetti. I mean, just look at this monstrosity. But now, just two years later, these same sorts of videos are getting really, 
really good. Scary good. Like, sure, this one here still isn't perfect. There still tells that it was generated by AI, but there is no question that this video is much, much better. Now, keep in mind, the amount of time between these two videos here is just two years. Two years. That is nothing in the grand scheme of things. So, how's it gonna look in another two years? In four? 10. AI is the worst it's ever going to be right now, and every day it improves. I am almost certain that you have seen some piece of art that you really liked that was generated by AI, even if you didn't realize it. The same can be said of generative AI in all areas. They already look and sound very good, very close to the real thing, and they're only going to get better quicker. And the industries that we cover here at Theorist, video games and film and the rest, they're taking notice and quickly trying to integrate this technology into their work. Every day, it feels like there's some new story about generative AI being incorporated into some new part of every industry under the sun. There are dozens of stories like this, but some of the biggest ones in recent years, Ubisoft is using generative AI to write background dialogue for NPCs. Who knows where that could go in the future? Microsoft has developed Xbox Copilot, which uses generative AI to create guides for you on the fly while you're playing video games. Basically like in-game cheat sheets or YouTube tutorials. Marvel used generative AI to create the intro for Secret Invasion and in posters for series like Loki. Other parts of Disney are looking to invest in AI to cut costs. And that's to say nothing of the impact that AI is going to have in places like visual effects. The only reason it's not everywhere already is because of the pushback from industry creatives. Remember those actor and writer strikes a couple years ago? Those were partly fights over the use of generative AI without permission or compensation. Uh, there's actually an ongoing strike from the actors against the video game industry over this very same thing. And even then, with all of this this resistance, the use of AI is getting rewarded both monetarily and critically. Yeah, you heard that right. Critically. The Oscars recently changed their rules to clarify that films that use generative AI during their production can win the big awards at the ceremony. Quote, the use of AI and other digital tools would neither help nor harm the chances of achieving a nomination. And this isn't a what if. This is a direct response to a controversy involving AI. See, one of the big contenders at the Oscars this year was a movie called The Brutalists, and the filmmakers were fairly open about the fact that they used generative AI in the film. In some cases, it was just for some artwork that mostly stayed in the background. I don't love that, but whatever. But in other cases, it was far more integral to the movie. The generative AI program Respeecher was used to redub lines given by the film's two lead performers, Adrian Brody and Felicity Jones, when they were speaking Hungarian. According to the film's editor, quote, I'm a native Hungarian speaker. It's an extremely unique language. We coached them and they did a fabulous job, but we also wanted to perfect it so that not even locals will spot any difference. Now, I'm not sure that I buy that, but the Academy did. Hollywood and the majority of that room full of industry professionals did. And do you know how I know that? Both Adrian Brody and Felicity Jones were nominated for these performances, despite the use of generative AI changing them significantly. Brody even won the Oscar for Best Actor for his work, even though part of it was generated by AI. And then he talked for way too long. Some say he's still giving that speech. Come on. Wrap it up, buddy. I look at this news, this decision by the Academy and the fact that the Brutalist was rewarded for the use of AI, and what I see is the beginning of a trend. Hollywood and gaming and everyone else see this technology as the next big revolution in these industries. And in the same way that CGI changed how movies were made or how 3D graphics changed video games, how those opened up so many possibilities, generative AI is going to change them too. To be honest, there will be a lot of good and a lot of bad because of it. A lot of creative people with zero resources and no money are going to be able to make some crazy stuff in their bedrooms. And a lot of companies are going to be able to cut a lot of jobs because of it too. Both of these things are already happening. And it's hard to tell what is and isn't AI anymore. I'm not gonna name it because I can't prove this, but we covered a highly requested series here on the channels in the last couple of years in a video that did very well. And looking back, I'm 99.5% sure that it used a significant amount of AI generated assets and no one noticed or cared because the results were that good. They were indistinguishable from real photos or videos or just traditional photoshops. And it only really dawned on me when I was looking back at it. On the other hand, we also covered a project from a major corporation and I was taken aback by a lot of the art. It looked AI generated to me and they were being so brazen about it. Then I got to the credits pointing to the human artists who made the images. To be clear, that's to say nothing of the quality of the work that those artists did. But 
AI's become so good at making stuff like this that I seriously couldn't tell. Remember earlier how we talked about that Loki poster that Marvel released, the ones that use generative AI? Understandably, that had people looking at all of the new posters they've been releasing and dissecting them. And recently, Marvel was accused of using generative AI for the posters for both Thunderbolts and Fantastic Four, but they've denied it. But I can see why people thought it. The game developer Blizzard Entertainment was also recently accused of using AI to replicate the voices of certain characters in Overwatch in different languages. Du bist eine echte Plage. I mean, listen to that. I can see why people thought that this was AI, but Blizzard denied it. It's not AI. It's just human acting that's a little flat. To be honest, that one about the AI voiceover really hits a bit close to home. I've been making content around YouTube for over a decade now, whether here on Theorist or on my own personal channels. And after AI-generated voiceover became prevalent, I started getting tons of comments accusing me, my own voice, of being AI, even on videos that were years old. Now, me, Matt, and the other hosts have always joked that I had the classic podcast documentary voice, but these commenters legitimately believed it. I remember a couple people here in the theorist community thought that I was AI taking over film theory too. And just think about that. AI has gotten to the point that flaws or imperfections in human work are being mistaken for tells that it's AI. The point of me bringing this up is that the line is getting blurry. People can't tell what's real or what's fake anymore. And that, I think, is probably the scariest part of all of this, right? It might not be today, it might not be this year or next, but there will be a time when this technology gets so good that there will be no way to prove whether or not generative AI was used in the creation of a work. Whether they created that special effect in the film by hand or generated it in a computer. Whether an artist 3D modeled something for a game by hand or just told ChatGPT to make it for them. This whole situation is only going to get worse because Say it with me, the AI is only getting better. In recent years, internally, we've seen some incredible technology pop up that's able to use generative AI to translate and redub videos using the original voice. And it was seamless. I remember Matt and Steph telling us about this technology after they saw it at an industry event, and I didn't believe them until I heard an example myself. All of a sudden, I'm watching a food theory with Santi speaking Spanish. I know, that's hard to believe. Or a game theory with Tom speaking French. It even had a British accent. We didn't end up moving Moving forward with that at the time, but YouTube did. They developed their own similar tool, and now if you go into the settings of a lot of videos here on the platform, you'll see an option for audio track, which uses generative AI to automatically translate the videos into other languages. It's not quite up to what we heard with these other technologies, but this is now widely available on the biggest video service in the world. And again, it's only going to get better. Okay, so generative AI is here. It's everywhere and in places you might not expect. It's not going away, and as we've talked about ad nauseum, it's going to be put into more and more of what you watch and play. But what are our next steps? Well, something that I've always respected about Theorist, why I love this group of people that I work with, is that we've always felt like we've had a responsibility to talk about the important topics in the spaces we're in. Whether that's gaming, film and television, food, or lifestyle, we've always been here to help educate about the most important topics of the day. And in a lot of cases, it would have been weird if we didn't do that. FNAF was a massive massive game changer. It would have been weird not to make theories. The same could be said for Poppy Playtime, the MCU, the Backrooms, Pink Sauce, Women's Pockets. And sometimes that's meant having some hard conversations about divisive or controversial subjects. Like when the news of Scott Cawthon's political donations came to light in the FNAF community. This is another moment where we as theorists, as a community, need to rise up and meet this moment as the media we consume changes. So. What are we going to do? What can we do? Well, I've come up with some rules and policies regarding generative AI that we are going to move forward with here at Theorist. And I encourage all of my fellow creators and theorists on YouTube and beyond to do the same. Our policy of avoiding generative AI to create our own assets, scripts, and editing in-house still applies. We will also continue to do our best to only find assets that were not generated by AI. I can't promise that we'll be perfect at this, but we'll do our best. The only exception will be if we're specifically talking about a topic that uses AI-generated content. But even then, wherever possible, the artists on our team will create our own assets to represent what we can where it makes sense. You can actually see how we did this in our video covering Angel Engine, where we made our own asset to represent one of the characters. But we will do more like this where we can. Also, we won't be talking about AI-generated content every week across the channels. That's not our main focus, and none of us want it to be our main focus. But when something comes highly requested by you guys, or it's something important to one of our industries, or it's a massive conversation in pop culture, that we need to be a part of, we'll be covering those topics
topics when and where they make sense. When we do, we'll make sure to call out the significant use of AI in those subjects so you can decide if you want to give that topic or that theory your attention. If you don't want to, we totally understand. And every single time we do an episode covering a topic that mainly uses AI-generated content, we'll also be using our platform to shine a spotlight on fully human creators and projects as well. What I really want to do here, not just with this video, but with all of Theorist, is to arm you with the tools to understand where the entertainment you love is and where it's headed. I want to help all of us remain realistic with what's happening, but also encourage us to be skeptical of what we see and what we hear, especially on the internet. I won't lie, all of this change is scary. It's happening fast, and it's going to shake up so much of what we love talking about here on YouTube as theorists. But together, you and me and all of us, we can face it. We can move forward in the best way possible and create a better future for all of us and the art that we love. But hey, that isn't a theory. It's a fact. And cut.